Photographers who want to learn portraiture, there's a lot more to it than simply setting up light sources and shooting away. One of the safest setups is placing two lights at 45 degree angles to your subject. It's safe, but it's also bland. There's a lot of nuance you can explore, nuance that can help you to finesse a, a lighting style to match the subject. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. But one of the best ways to develop expertise is to experiment. In this demonstration and related assignment, I'm using natural sunlight and a few modifiers. Black foam core to block light, a diffusion disc from a 5-in-1. If you don't have a 5-in-1, you can use wax paper, a, a shower curtain, anything that will diffuse the light, and a reflector. If you don't have a reflector, create one. Get a piece of cardboard and put some aluminum foil on it. I'm doing this demo in front of a north window, and here's the view from the window. Besides the north window, there's a smaller window facing west. I set up a piece of black velvet as a background. I have my camera on a tripod, and I'm using a mannequin head to illustrate my choices. Here's the first photo shot without any modifiers, 1 30th of a second at f4. Pause the video and study it for a second, and look closely, and what is it you see? Where are the highlights? Where are the shadows? What kinds of ratios are there? Are the highlights too bright? Are the shadows too dark? Again, pause and study this for a moment. Being curious about exposure, I have five more photos. The first underexposed by five stops from where I started. So this is shot at 1 one twenty-fifth of a second at f11. This one is four stops underexposed, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second at f8. Three stops, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second at f5.6. Two stops, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second at f4 and one stop, one sixtieth of a second, at f4. Now here's a composite of the six stops among those shots. Going back to my original settings of one thirtieth of a second at f4, I added a diffuser between the window and the subject, then took a shot. Can you spot one very obvious difference between these two shots? The two shots are with and without the diffuser. Do you notice the difference in color? What is it you know about white balance? Why is one blue and the other orange? What color is light from an overcast sky, also known as a diffused light? Diffused light is bluer than sunlight. The photo on the right is sunlight. The photo on the left is sunlight through a diffuser. Next, I've taken four shots using the diffuser, but each of these four shots has the diffuser placed at a different distance from the subject. The first here is a few inches away. You can see the diffuser in the shot. Here, the diffuser is one foot away. You can still see the edge of the diffuser. Here's two feet away. and four feet away. Now here's a composite of all four to study. Have you noticed anything that detracts from these examples so far? Now besides managing the light sources, a skilled portraitist manages reflections as well. We'll look at reflecting light into the shadow side of the face shortly. I'm talking about managing reflection from that second window. I've used a 4 by 6 foot piece of black foam core as a flag. A flag is a modifier to block light. Notice the reflections, or rather lack of reflections, on the eyes and the lips. Look at these two examples side by side and note the differences. 
Now I have five shots using a reflector to add light to the shadow side of the face. I'm still using a flag to block the second window and a diffuser between the window and the subject. This shot has the reflector placed about eight inches from the subject. You can see the reflector in the shot. Notice how much light is reflected to add fill to the shadow side of the face. Here the reflector is two feet away, four feet away, six feet away, and eight feet away. Study the composite of these five shots. Finally, we're going to add a live model with a couple of twists. I'm wearing sunglasses, which adds to the complexity of the lighting considerations. You may want to review the family of angles. Moreover, the sunglasses are rounded and not flat. For the first example, the second window is not flagged and there is no diffuser. Notice the two different sets of reflections, one in each lens. The lens on camera right shows the reflection from the second window. The lens on camera left reflects the frame and the drapes of the north window. The second setup employs a flag to block the reflections in the second window. There is a diffuser between the subject and the main window, but because of the family of angles, it does not appear in the lens. The third setup moves the diffuser closer to the camera and angles it so part of it appears in the lens. The last setup moves the diffuser even closer to the camera and angles it so that even more of it appears in the sunglasses. I could have adjusted the diffuser further to show even more of it in the lens of the sunglasses. The point of this entire demonstration is to inform you about choices you can make when doing portraits. It's more than just light placement. It's understanding the quality of the diffused light, understanding reflections, family of angles, and a lot more. When you're trying to learn about lighting, it's good to have someone to show you new things. But don't stop there. Don't simply take someone's word for it. Instead, recreate studies like these with your own model, your own equipment, your own camera. By doing it yourself, you can put those principles into practice and then they become powerful tools for you to use.